Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, I show you how to flush the coolant on your 2005 to 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee WK with a V6 engine. You're going to need about two gallons of distilled water, a five gallon bucket, a funnel, a clear plastic tube, and specific Mopar coolant. I have a link to everything you need for this job in the description below. Please make sure that your engine is cold before doing this. At the bottom of your radiator, you'll see a little spout. You want to connect this clear tube to the end of that. Slide that on and grab your five gallon bucket. We'll be draining what we can from the radiator into this bucket. Now turn the knob on that bottom spout counterclockwise to get it to start draining. It might be a little difficult to get it started and it might not seem like it's draining all that much. Just give it time and it will drain a decent amount. You can see it definitely draining from the coolant reservoir now. And here you can see we've got a decent amount in our five gallon bucket. After it's done draining, you can close up that bottom spout and remove the plastic tube. We're gonna be reusing this five gallon bucket to mix new coolant. So grab yourself a funnel and a couple empty one gallon containers and make sure you properly dispose of this coolant. We removed roughly one and a half gallons from the engine. Now take one gallon of your distilled water and pour it into the five gallon bucket. Then take one gallon of your coolant and mix that entire bottle with the distilled water giving you a 50-50 two gallon mixture. Drop a funnel in your coolant reservoir tank and fill it carefully to the max line. Then grab yourself an 8 millimeter hex bit and a 3 8 inch drive ratchet. We're going to be removing the coolant bleeder screw. Once we remove that bleeder screw near the top of that radiator hose, we're going to take a gallon container with new coolant, drop a funnel in, and fill that hole with new coolant. And while we're doing this, we're going to squeeze that top radiator hose gently to get any air bubbles that are trapped in the system. What I did was temporarily replace the bleeder screw, start the engine, and then I carefully removed the bleeder screw and put more coolant in there while the engine was running until it was slightly overflowing. This allowed me to make sure that I was getting rid of all the air in the system. At this point, you may notice bubbles coming up into your coolant reservoir tank. That's normal and a natural way for this system to bleed itself of air. Before replacing the bleeder screw for the final time, make sure you apply a little red thread locker and tighten it down. I put a little pen mark on there to make sure it didn't come loose. And the final step, run your engine idle to operating temperature and make sure it stays there without overheating. Take it for a spin around the block and make sure it does the same thing. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. I'll catch you on the next one.